going to talk about photosynthesis. At the end of today's lesson, you should be able to explain the process of photosynthesis. List the requirements for the process of photosynthesis. Give the products of photosynthesis. Explain the importance of the process of photosynthesis. Conduct experiments to test for the presence of starch in food and leaves, and write a scientific report. So, are you ready? Let's embark on this incredible journey into the heart of photosynthesis and unlock the secrets that make plants the true superheroes of our planet. Living organisms need energy to sustain life. Where does this energy come from? What ingredients are needed in the body in order for the body to make this energy? We are going to learn where energy comes from and how it is made available to living things. Living organisms interact with one another and are interdependent in an ecosystem. What does this mean? Interdependent means living organisms rely on each other to survive. And an ecosystem is a network of interaction between organisms as well as organisms and their environment. One way in which organisms are interdependent is by eating each other. For example, the buck eats the grass and the lion eats the buck. The interactions and interdependence between organisms in an ecosystem is driven by the need for energy. Energy is needed to sustain life. We are going to learn about where this energy comes from. Looking into the past, people did not always know about the process of photosynthesis. People thought that plants acquired food from the soil. They thought that the mass of a plant comes from the soil. That means they thought plants take up soil to increase their mass as they grow. It took the work of scientists for us to discover that photosynthesis was occurring right under our noses. To find out if plants really increased their mass from soil, a Belgian scientist, John Baptiste van Helmorn carried out an experiment over five years to test this. Jan Baptiste van Helmorn did his experiment from 1634 to try to understand where the mass of a tree comes from. He weighed a small willow tree and it was 2.3 kilograms. He put the willow tree in a pot that had dry soil weighing 90.9 kilograms. After planting the tree, he watered the tree with rain water each week. This continued for five years. After the five years, he removed the tree from the pot and weighed it. He also dried the soil in the pot and weighed it. The tree was now 77 kilograms. And the soil was 90.8 kilograms. Looking at the numbers from this experiment, the tree had gained almost 75 kilograms. But the soil had only lost 0.1 kilogram. The soil did not lose its mass, but the tree gained 75 kilograms. But where did the increase in mass of the plant come from? Surely, the plant could not have taken it from the soil otherwise the soil would be almost finished after five years. The increase in the mass of the plant must have come from another source. Jan Baptist van Helmond's willow tree experiment proved that plants gained weight by using water and not soil. Scientists later concluded that plants are able to manufacture their own food through the process of photosynthesis. So, thanks to Jan Baptist van Helmond's curious experiment, we now know a lot more about the secret life of plants and how they turn sunlight into food and keep our planet alive and thriving. We learnt in grade 7 that the sun is the ultimate source of energy for all living things. The sun provides light energy. Light energy is also known as radiant energy. You may call it either light energy or radiant energy, and you need to be familiar with both terms. The light energy from the sun cannot be used by living organisms directly. You may enjoy basking in the sun on a cold day, but basking in the sun will not give you the energy that you need to live. A green plant, on the other hand, is able to use the light energy from the sun and convert it into chemical energy. Plants are able to produce their own food because their leaves act as food factories. This process is known as photosynthesis. This chemical energy can now be used by the very plant that made it. 
It can also be used by the buck that eats the plant. Lastly, when the lion eats the buck, it gets to use that same chemical energy that is now stored in the buck. What does photosynthesis mean? Photo means light. Synthesis means to put together or make or produce something. So by definition, photosynthesis is the process by which plants use carbon dioxide from the air, water, from the soil, and energy from the sun in a series of chemical reactions to produce glucose and oxygen. Photosynthesis is a process which takes place in the green leaves of plants. So during the process of photosynthesis, plants use the sun's light energy to make their own food, specifically glucose, in a series of chemical reactions. Plants require the following resources in order to photosynthesize. Sunlight supplies radiation energy or light energy for the process of photosynthesis to occur. Chlorophyll is the green pigment in plant cells that absorbs or traps radiation energy. Plants' leaves are green in color because they have a green pigment inside their cells. Water is absorbed by roots of a plant from the soil and it goes up the stem to leaves. Carbon dioxide is another ingredient for photosynthesis. Plants absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere through plant leaves. Plant leaves have small openings on their surface which are called stoma. It is through these stoma or stomatas that carbon dioxide enters into the leaf. These are the two products of photosynthesis. Glucose and oxygen. Glucose is a simple sugar molecule and it is the main product. Glucose serves as a source of energy for all living organisms. Glucose is stored in the form of starch. Oxygen happens to be a waste product of the process of photosynthesis. What happens to the oxygen? The oxygen is released by the plant via the leaves back into the atmosphere. Oxygen is the most important gas needed by all living organisms for their survival. Only living things that contain chlorophyll in their cells are able to photosynthesize. The diagram on the right shows the process of photosynthesis in a plant. As the diagram shows, photosynthesis begins when light energy from the sun makes contact with the green parts of the plant. Chlorophyll which is the green pigment in plant cells absorbs the light energy. The light energy absorbed by chlorophyll is used to bind carbon dioxide chemically with water. A food molecule known as glucose is then formed in a series of reactions. Oxygen is also produced in the process. Some of the glucose is used by the plant and some is stored as starch. Oxygen is released into the atmosphere as a byproduct in the form of a gas. The equation below gives a summary of what happens during photosynthesis. In the presence of radiation energy from the sun and chlorophyll, water and carbon dioxide are together converted into glucose and oxygen. Chlorophyll is something that is needed for the reaction to take place, but it doesn't get directly involved in the reaction. As mentioned before, glucose is a sugar in its simplest form. Plants convert glucose into starch, cellulose and other compounds that they need for processes such as growth and reproduction. Plants store energy in the form of starch, so glucose is also converted to starch. Glucose, starch and cellulose are all types of carbohydrates. Glucose is a simple sugar and the energy stored in glucose is chemical energy. Many glucose molecules bond together to form a starch molecule. Starch is a more complex sugar molecule made of glucose molecules joined together. Starch molecules are stored in the leaf and other parts of the plant such as the fruit. In seeds in the stem of a plant and in roots. These starches are food to animals, including humans. They provide them with energy when they eat them. Glucose is also converted to cellulose. Every cell in a plant is surrounded by a cell wall made of cellulose. We will learn more about this in grade 9. Cellulose is a structural material or building material that provides support for the plant so that they can grow tall without falling over. Wood consists of 50% cellulose while cotton has 90% cellulose. 
cellulose is what provides fiber in our diet. Fiber cannot be broken down in our bodies but helps in healthy digestion. Photosynthesis is a very important process for many reasons. Firstly, it allows plants to make the food they need and also for animals including humans. Secondly, photosynthesis produces oxygen which is a very useful byproduct. Plants and animals need oxygen for respiration. Thirdly, photosynthesis helps to remove carbon dioxide from the air. Too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is not good because it makes the earth too warm. I am sure you have heard about global warming, too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere can cause global warming. This extra warmth causes problems like climate change, melting ice, rising sea levels, and changes in weather patterns. It's like putting too many blankets on a hot day, things get uncomfortable. We need to keep a balance to have a happy, healthy planet. And plants, through the process of photosynthesis can help us achieve this. We have come to the end of our class today. But before you go, try answering these questions by yourself before the answers pop up. You can pause the video as you go. Thank you and let's meet next time.